Og fell in line with the other Ogrins as Bonehead Biff gave the order to move out. Og spared a final look back in the direction that the medicine people had taken Commissar Gallus before turning his attention to the retreating Tyranid force in front of him. The Emperor still had work for him to do. With the Lamenters reinforcing them, the Imperium began to drive back the tide of bioforms and began pushing them to the patch of dense jungle that the Cadian regiments called Bug Bait Forest. Most of the larger, more valuable bioforms had withdrawn to the back of the lines, leaving Hormagants and Termagants to hold off the advancing units. Flamers, Bolters, Melters, Lasfire all poured into the teeming mass, destroying Xenos after Xenos. In a few locations, vulnerable infantry units were being disrupted, first by a spray of bioweapon fire, followed by an assault by melee units. Despite their retreat, the Tyranids still seemed to be thinking strategically, attacking vulnerable points in the line, targeting inexperienced infantry units, trying to do as much damage as possible in their withdrawal. Where the advance stalled, Hormagants would charge in with scything limbs to make the Imperials bleed as much as possible. The Lamenters moved in to reinforce sections of the army where these thrusts occurred to help drive them back. Armor was also moving forward to catch up with the advance and provide heavy fire support. The Imperial Knight Makai and his pilot Talios thinned the ranks of Tyranids before Biff's Ogrins and Commissar Fletcher's Cadians. Very few were able to effectively attack the advancing line at that point. The best they could do was hurl bodies at them and try to slow them down as they reached the jungle. A squad of Lamenters fought to the left of the Cadian regiment. Og marched with the line, firing his ripper gun whenever he saw the bad bug stirring in the clouds of smoke that spread across the battlefield. Whenever he could, he would steal a look over at the space marines as they fought. Their shots always seemed to find their mark as they tore through rank upon rank of gaunts. But the little you have, we die in glory! The Ogrins didn't really understand the war cry, but the shouting spurred them forward, driving the bad bugs to the edge of the jungle. As the Tyranids vanished into the thick undergrowth, flamer teams began to move forward to begin sweeping the jungle. Hush! The order was so loud and forceful that even the Astartes paused to see who gave it. Fighting ceased along the lines as the Tyranids lay in wait in the jungle. The order was being broadcast from each of the Imperial Knights that supported the forces of the Astara Triangle. I am Talios, pilot of the Venerable Knight Makai, wielder of the mighty chainsword Androcles. We have burned and despoiled our land, destroyed our vast hunting grounds, and we have done so in the Emperor's name. But we demand our right to a final hunt. The Xeno shall become the quarry that has been denied to us. If any of you interfere, we will consider you our quarry as well. We don't have time for this. We cannot risk losing any knights in this chase for glory while other points on the planet were unable to contain the Xenos. They need to be destroyed as quickly as possible, and then we must move. Lives are on the line. Human lives are unbearably brief. You know this better than most, Lamenter. It is a legend that lives beyond mortality, and we will write our legend today or you will not have the support of the night houses. The guard and the space marines watched as the massive weapons of war moved into the jungle with their retinues at their feet to prevent boarding actions from the smaller bioforms. The Lamenta captain swore beneath his breath as the sounds of the last great hunt began. Two scores of knights entered the forest. It was unclear how many would return. The action of the knights forced the hands of the other commanders, who needed to decide how many troops needed to remain until the knights either finished their hunt or were all destroyed. This Tyranid force could not be allowed to remain. As the commanders sorted out their orders and made necessary preparations for their current situation, the Lamenters were preparing to move as well. Ships began to arrive to collect space marines and recover their drop pods. The Ogrins had no commander besides Biff, 
who wasn't quite sure what to do with himself or the others. He decided that everyone should line up and dig a trench. He always liked digging trenches. Many of the ogrins did not have their entrenching tools with them, and simply used their powerful hands to dig in the earth. One of the lamenters, a primaris by the look of him, saw the ogrins at work and looked around. In the confusion of the aftermath of the battle, no one had given the ogrins new orders. The space marine addressed Biff. Where is your commander? Biff raised his hand. Don't you have a commissar? Bonehead Biff lowered his hand and his head. Og spoke up. He's going to the Emperor's house. The lamenter nodded solemnly. Then his duty is done. May the Emperor's light guide his soul. Seeing the lamenter speaking with the ogren, Commissar Fletcher moved towards the Space Marine, looking a little uncomfortable. Is there something I can help you with, my lord? I am Sergeant Lazarus Soul. I am here to coordinate efforts between our chapter and the guard units. Fletcher tried to conceal his feelings about the situation, but the subtle look of discomfort on his face suggested that he wanted nothing to do with the Lamenters, or commanding these Ogren, though he had to admit that he owed his life to the one that saved him from being bug food. Ogrens, let's move out. Uh, bonehead, get your men together. You will be moving with my regiment until you are assigned a new officer. Biff hauled himself out of the trench and the other ogrens began to follow his example. Og began gathering his things, fumbling a bit as he tried to climb out of the trench. His body still ached from the fight with the Carnifex. Sergeant Lazarus held out a hand to Og. The ogren grasped it, and the Primaris effortlessly hauled Og's enormous form out of the trench. Oh, uh, thanks, um, my lord space marine, sir. Uh, my name's Og. Emperor's blessings upon you, Og. I am sorry for your loss. With that, Og and the other Ogren began the trek back to the fort for redeployment, as the great hunt in the jungle continued. Sergeant Lazarus Sol followed, counting unit strength and learning as much as he could about the officers and the chain of command. Og continued to watch the sergeant as they marched. He seemed really nice, and he was awfully strong for a little guy.